Hi, I'm, I'm Dave Foley, and uh, you're in the cuts. Welcome, I'm Amy Weber and this is In The Cuts. This is going to be great fun. Tonight we bring you the Producers Awards, Premier Final Fantasy, an unbelievable dance production dinner theater Harlotique. Well, the guys at the top of a TV show or film are called the Producers, and recently they got together to honor their own in Beverly Hills. What's up everybody, I'm Amy Papreth for In The Cuts. We're here at the fourth annual Indie Producer Award honoring actor Michael Rapoport. Let's check out who showed up tonight. Well, I'm a, a big supporter of the independent producers regardless of uh, who it is this year specific because uh, I really am an admirer and a respecter and a believer and a supporter of independent film. I'm a big fan of, you know, directors, producers, they give me work, so I decided to come out. I'm hosting the event for, uh, for, in, for the indie producer people. I'll be reading some cards awkwardly uh, throughout the evening. Nobody knows how hard that job is. Are you here to support anyone in particular, or just coming out to have a good night and, you know, watch? Michael Rappaport, of course. I watch his show all the time, so he's a great actor. Yeah. Have you ever worked with Michael? No, I haven't. Hopefully, someday I will, though. My TV husband, Michael Rappaport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. We have a really great time together um, doing that show, and we've kind of extended it, you know, in, in life, we've become really good friends, and so I'm, I'm so glad that I got a chance to, you know, present this to him. Yeah, but I don't get the same respect I get when there's lines. I get, I get less in real life. But they're cool, though. He's, at, he's honest, honestly, he's a really good guy, and he's, he, he really is, like, nurturing as an actor, and he's, um, I really enjoy working. Me and Michael, like, out of anybody in the cast, have remained the closest, to be honest with you. And we just we go to movies, we go to dinner, it's, it's really a lot of fun. We have a good time. Who are, have you ever worked with Michael Rappaport? No, but I love him. I think he's great. I think he's great. He's really funny. He has one of the funniest moments in movies when he was in that Woody Allen movie and he's wearing the helmet with the flashlight on backwards. Like, what are you wearing the flashlight on backwards for? And they're tunneling in to rob the, 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 that store and he says, it looks cool. I mean, he's great. You know, he's very dramatic and he's very funny. He's a wonderful guy. I'm, I'm being honored. I think that that's really great because I think Michael's a really great actor and he's a great guy to work with and uh, I'm really happy for him. You know, working hard for 15 years, so I'm, I'm happy and proud and, you know, glad, glad you know, get any kind of acknowledgement and stuff like that. I'm very thrilled. I'm very, very thrilled. That's all from us here at the 4th Annual Indie Producer Awards. We talked to Michael Rappaport and the entire War at Home family, but I think he was even checking out my tattoos. I like your uh, tattoos. I saw that one too. A little wandering eyes there. Well, you can't get much bigger than that, and it sure looks like Elizabeth had fun. Well, next, Sony Pictures brings us the latest installment of Final Fantasy. Hi, this is Christy Clark. We're here in fabulous Hollywood, California at the Arclight Theater for the premiere of Final Fantasy VII. So I'm actually here with the star tonight of Final Fantasy VII. You play the part of Cloud, am I correct? Yes, yes I do. Now, tell, tell us a little bit about your character. Uh, I don't know much, actually. You probably know more than I do. Well, I got to kind of know the character from directors and producers and, you know, people from this movie, the Japanese producers and directors, telling me what Cloud was about. And... Tell us a little bit about your character. Well, my, my name is Marlene. She did a little bit of the narrating. Aerith is, uh, she's kind of the ethereal one, the one who, um, you know, is very diplomatic, tries to give advice, and, and somewhat mothering, uh, kind of takes care of some of the other characters. Unlike a lot of characters that you sometimes get to play in animation that are either childlike or whatever, Kadaj got to be uh, nuts and totally insane, crazy. I gotta go nuts, kill people, things like that. Quentin Flynn here, I play Reno. 
and he's a uh, hot-headed villain, but he's lovable. Tell us a little about your character. Just a very, uh, kind of a, not the brightest tool in the you know, shed, but a wonderful fighter, and uh, uh, he means harm. But <laughs> I play the character of Elena, and could you tell us a little bit about her? Um, she's great. She's a little fighter, you know, she's a really strong character. So much fun to get into these characters. They're so well written, and they've got so much life to them. You know, it's just great to be able to get behind the mic and, and give them, you know, voice. And it's really fun. Well, how much harder is voice acting over full-on acting? To me, it's a lot harder because you have to be very still. You can't be moving around the microphone. The difference mainly is conveying everything about a character with the help of a director, particularly in a dubbed project where there's already been a performance. Um, conveying all of that with just your voice and the help of the director to understand what's going on versus on camera where you're creating a total performance based on your behavior and the way you look and everything else. I mean, voiceover is great because, you know, you don't have to go to, you know, costume and wardrobe and makeup and all that stuff. You just, you know, go and you do your thing and, you know, it's over with. Favorite games? Call of Duty, which is the one that's, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, old school, like Mario Kart. I really liked that a lot. That's the one that I'm really good at. The rest of them I just have to watch. I have three brothers who are also extremely big video game fans, so uh, yeah, they're kind of playing in our house all the time. <laughs> Favorite games? Ooh. Metroid Prime. The video games I like are all old school, like pinball, Pac-Man, and things like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm like partial to the way old school, like Donkey Kong and Frogger and Miss Pac-Man. Do you know you're the third person that's told me that so yeah, far I'm, on this I'm, carpet? I'm not surprised, but I'll bet I could kick their butt, though. At least I miss Pac-Man. I'm going to go find them right now. <laughs> I want to see this one. Butt. <laughs> but I love the artwork. I think it's some of the most advanced, you know, some of the creatures and the things that, you know, that they're coming up with. Some of the, and, and the games are getting so deep in story. It's just, it's, it's remarkable. It's just going to keep growing. Are you hungry for some good food, dancing, and song? Avalon played host to Harlequin, and we were front and center to bring it to you. Never know how much I love you. Never know how much I care. When you hey, it's your Angel Pie at the premiere show of LA's first burlesque, Harlow Teak. It's called the Harlow Teak, and we are here tonight at Avalon Spider Club. The show is a burlesque show, um, classic 1920s burlesque show which was, back in the day, um, not a strip, but a tease, and a slow reveal. Um, and the difference between stripping and burlesque is we are all classically trained dancers. No, I stand in the front and, and sing, and then we have the dancers behind us. <laughs> what brings me here tonight? You know, we came down to check out the show. It seems like it's going to be exciting, so perks of the business, exactly. Harlotique is the brainchild of one of the relationships I went through. So the entire story takes you on a journey and I think that people like it because everyone's been on that journey through the makeups and the breakups and everything else. Um, it kind of just takes you back to a different era and there's no one storyline. It, it breaks my heart because I think live dance and live music is one of the great joys of being human. That LA is a little bit starved for this type of stuff. There is Across the country, there's really nothing like this show, which makes me very proud as well. I don't think that this piece is. Um, it's definitely a piece that I personally am interested in. I've always loved that era. We feature amazing singers, uh, live jazz, lots of dancers, lots of bras and stuff, and great food, and Avalon's amazing. I absolutely love it. I don't think it's difficult. I think as soon as you put on that music, it just takes you away, and you end up moving the way they used to move and dancing the way you used to dance. Julie, baby, you're my flame. Everest, fever. When we kiss it, fever with that flame in you. Fever! Wow, Hollow Teak was fun and sassy. That was great. Well, but that's all the time we have for tonight, guys. I'm Angel Pie. Back to you in the studio, Amy.